Hey guys, welcome to another walkthrough. Today we're going to talk about ivy, plant growth, moss, that type of stuff. The type of stuff you see on your walls, on a tree or on an old shed. Well, you know what I mean. So before I show the base template, I want to explain a bit about the uh, setup. Let's have a look here. So I've got a very simple particle system here. So I've disabled these nodes here. So right now it doesn't do anything at all. I've got a simple P emitter and a renderer and the P emitter is set to um, a line region. So they will be emitted somewhere on this line. Uh, the emitter is set to 12 particles, but you can change it to whatever. And it is animated, so it is only emitting on the first frame. So when you hit play right now, nothing will happen because there's no velocity specified. So that's where the first one comes in, the P custom. If I enable it now and start playing, you see this sort of random movement. So that looks pretty cool. So this random movement is controlled by um, the expressions in here, right? And these expressions are governed by the parameters you can set here. So uh, later on, when I show the actual template, you will see the exact same notes in there, but it's just a bit easy to go through it um, here in a bit of a bare bones setup. So here you can change the Y speed, how fast do the, uh, the particles travel upwards, the X speed, so uh, how much movement to the left and the right will you see. You can have a bit of a Y speed randomness as well, otherwise all the particles will pretty much go at the same speed. And there is a change parameter which basically governs as to how fast the particle will change direction. And that is really about left and right. And so as such, you know, no ivy, no plant growth yet. Right? So we would need to do something. So what we do here is basically we introduce a P spawn. A P spawn. And when I enable that, you see this happening. And that's starting to look a bit more like it. Uh, sometimes you see some glitches, I would need to restart the particle system to resolve that, like so, and sometimes you would need to um, flush the cache as well. In any case, that can happen from time to time in Fusion uh, and Resolve. Uh, oh yeah, and I should have said that at the start, this template will work both in Fusion, Fusion 9 and, and upwards, and also in uh, DaVinci Resolve, as of uh, DaVinci Resolve uh, 15, I believe. Going back to the setup here, so that looks pretty good. So the way this happens really is, if we look at the controls tab here, the trick is that you set the velocity transfer to zero and all the other velocity to zero as well. So basically it spawns a particle from the position of the other particle, right? The particles that get emitted here they will basically lead to spawn particles here. So as you can see here, I assigned these to a different set. So this one here is assigned to set one and the spawn to set two. And that is also the reason why the P custom is not affecting the spawned particles because in the conditions, so you can see here that is affecting set one, but not set two, the spawned particles, because otherwise, well, we can uh, quickly show that if we do this, then you can see you get particles that, that get spawned, but they get move up in a similar type of movement. So we don't want that. So let's disable this. Uh, but this is not very convincing yet. So the next element we want to have really is to have a bit of branching. So we've got another P spawn here that I've switched off now. Now this one is set to set one. So that means the spawn particles, they will be affected by the P custom as well. So if we switch this on, there we go. And all of a sudden, we get a much more densely populated sort of particle system, like so. Right? So you can change all of this um, by uh, changing the parameters and such. And so, Back now to the base template. So now that you understand the base setup, it is easier to talk through it. So in the base template, uh, the P emitter and also the branching uh, emitter, the particles are transparent. So you can't actually see them. You only see the spawned static particles. So first of all, the IV. 
from over here. Uh, what's happening here? It's just pulling in a little PNG, not a great PNG, but as the leaves are so small, it doesn't really matter. An alpha multiply, and I could have done it in the same node as well, of course, but sometimes I like to split these, these things out to see what I'm doing. Um, and that's all there is really to it. Uh, for the other one, for the flowers, we didn't really talk about those yet, but essentially it's another pea spawn, but then uh, the particles are flowers rather than uh, the leaves. Right? And here I put in some random flowers and the loader here is set to loop. And by the way, the loader here, even though it's a single one, is set to loop as well because otherwise it would be done in one frame and there would be no input to the uh, P spawn anymore. Okay, so the flower spawn works exactly the same as the uh, ivy spawn. Uh, the difference here is that um, apart from the size and such, the conditions, the probability is set really low. So that means it's not being spawned all the time. And that means as well that you see fewer flowers compared to ivy leaves. So if you want to increase the number of flowers, you would need to pull the slider to the right. Now, here's a word of warning. Um, unfortunately, on my system at least, um, when you work with a more complex particle system, um, fusion can get a bit unstable at times. So sometimes changing a parameter will just crash fusion altogether. It's not great, but that's the way it is, again, at least on my system. So my advice is really save your work very often. Okay, so yeah, if you want to change things, of course, you can change the, um, the images here, here. You can change it into something radically different. And of course, you can change the size, for instance, the size of the leaf. You just go to the style and set a different size here or even a size variance. Okay, now there's a note here in the middle. And you may wonder, why is that note there? And that note I had to put in because I noticed, noticed that in Fusion 16.1.1 at least, and maybe other uh, versions of Fusion above 9, um, spawned particles sometimes get a random Z spin or Z spin, right? So the particles started rotating without any reason. In this P custom, it's basically a workaround, I just set the Z spin or spin Z or spin Z to zero. So that stops it from occurring. This is not needed in Fusion 9, but on Fusion 16, on my system, I have to have this in, otherwise I got a random spinning. Okay, so when we all do all of this, we feed it into a renderer. I've got a camera here as well. I have a bit of color correction. Let me show it here. Uh, I put a bit of shadow behind it because sometimes it makes it easier to integrate it with the background like that, but you will need to play around with it. I've got a bit of a display, so right now it's not doing an awful lot because the background is just blank. Right In the template itself that I'm distributing, I'm not putting in uh, any fancy background or anything like that. That will be up to you. I also blurred it out a tiny bit, right as you can see here. Uh, again, sometimes that makes it easier to integrate, but for your particular purpose, if your footage is particularly sharp, there is no need for that. So that's all there is to it. Uh, but let me show you a uh, brief other example. This is the one you saw in the video. It's a very, it's basically making use of the same base template, but I cut out the flowers because there was no need for them. And also I tweaked some of the settings. I changed the uh, the speed, I changed the size of the leaves and such, so it's all a bit more subtle here. Also what I did was, uh, if you look at the renderer, right, it is more a uh, portrait-like um, output, right, rather than your sort of standard standard 16 by 9 output and made it into 750 by 2200 type output. Uh, the reason there is really because I needed to have these particles on here and that's a more suitable shape, right? So all I did really was to render that out, a uh, bit of color correction and such blur, and then, and that's very important, feed it into a planar tracker. And a planar tracker is fed by this little video of a forest, right? So I added some color correction in there 
and uh, a not very fancy color correction and some people may shudder looking at this it's uh, not very good but in any case i did it and then i basically tracked the tree applied a um, corner pin and then this basically will feed into this corner pin and there you go then you've got your ivy basically appearing on the tree trunk now the way you, you got to be a bit careful here for instance the apply mode is very important if you would set this to normal see it's like wow that looks absolutely horrendous now of course um, the color correction plays a role here the color correction really was based on uh, the apply mode being multiply so in this context this color correction works if you change it to normal or doesn't I'm not saying that you should always do this. In the other example you saw, I didn't use it in the multiply apply mode, but it depends on the look you want to achieve. So in this particular case, it needed to be much more integrated with the tree rather than sort of on top of it, if that makes any sense at all. So there you go. Uh, that's the way you would do that. And it works, I think, quite well. So I think that's all there is to it in terms of the template, but let me spend a few minutes on showing you guys how you do it in Resolve. So let's switch over to Resolve. So here in Resolve, let's go to the Edit tab and then pull in a Fusion composition. And we can drag it out a bit, right, to a suitable size. And then we head over to the Fusion tab. And here, what you will need to do is uh, import Fusion Composition and then you need to navigate basically to the folder where uh, you saved uh, my template and I need to find it now. There we go. Let's try right one. So as you can see, it has been imported. So what you need to do then is add in the media out because that sort of disappeared, that happens uh, from time to time, or maybe even always, and then pipe in the large, last merge into the media out. But what you will see here straight away is, hold on, where is everything? I, we're, well, we're at time zero, so nothing really happens yet, but even when you go to time 100, nothing is really happening. All right, so you play it, nothing happens. The reason is that these loaders don't get automatically populated so you need to remove these and then basically you need to navigate to your folder so here for the IV I just pull in this little one here and for the flowers I select all four and as these have the same num uh, name and they've got sequential numbering it will recognize it as a sequence if we pull it in like this all right so if we now pull this in, pipe it in, then we'll start seeing things. Um, you need to ensure that it is set to loop. And there you go. You can see the IV appearing. Um, and then for the other ones, for the flowers, let's pull them in here. Connect it to the alpha multiply. And very importantly, here I need to tick the loop because it didn't set it automatically. And I think that's because uh, there was more than one picture in there. So there you go. And the rest is all really the same in Resolve. So here you can go back to the Edit tab. Now I have to say my computer is not very powerful at all. So well, still it shows up pretty quickly. And then you're done. Unless you want to do, of course, something much more cool, like with uh, the planar tracking and such. So um, yeah, I think that's all there is to it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And in the meantime, have a great day. Bye-bye.